for everyone working in the seafood industry, headlines like these would be very, very bad news. Should people hear the words poisoning and seafood together, they'd automatically and understandably shy away from eating fish and shellfish for a while. That has a knock-on effect for everyone. Less fish being bought, less work to be done, less money in your pocket. Aside from the financial side, there could also be legal problems. Depending on your role in the organisation, you could be suspended, sacked, fined or even imprisoned if you're found responsible for causing illness through avoidable, dangerous practices. Remember, it's your livelihood and your liberty we're trying to protect. So watch carefully and take heed. What is hygiene? It sounds like an easy question, but ask anyone and they'll probably say, well, it's probably cleaning and stuff. Well, it's not quite as simple as that. Cleaning and cleanliness certainly play a big part in hygiene, but it actually means the science of maintaining health. It is a science, and like all sciences, it requires study, practice and understanding. So, yes, in practice, hygiene does mean that you keep everything clean, your tools, your workplace, yourself and the product. But the first thing to understand is why you have to keep everything clean. This is the enemy, bacteria. Actually, when there's only one, it's called a bacterium. But, you know, the problem is that there's never just one of them. Why? Well, watch this. They multiply incredibly quickly, and that's all they do. They divide and multiply, divide and multiply. How fast depends on the conditions, how much depends on when and how they're stopped. And to make things worse, they spread both through touch and in the air. Bacteria are the foundations of serious health-threatening illnesses like salmonella and botulism. Most types of food poisoning can happen as easily in a chicken dish as in a fish dish or even a vegetarian ready meal, as bacteria love high-protein foods. Fish straight from the sea doesn't usually contain food poisoning bacteria, so we're starting with a safe raw material. It's what can happen to the fish after they're caught that can create the problems. Shellfish are the same, although as they have the ability to pick up harmful bacteria and viruses from the water in which they grow, there are other issues that have to be managed as well. So now we've met the enemy, let's understand the battle. You have to try and get the seafood from the sea and to the customer without dangerous bacteria getting a stranglehold on the product. Consider everything that the fish and shellfish come into contact with on this journey and you can imagine how tough a task this is. In an average processing plant, the fish will touch various hoppers, conveyor belts, knives and human hands before they reach the packaging stage. Also, anyone working on the production line could contaminate the product through coughs and sneezes. It sounds like an impossible task, but it can be done. One thing to bear in mind is that we're only talking about dangerous bacteria here, the ones that cause food poisoning. The incoming seafood will carry some naturally occurring bacteria right from the start of the process. These are the ones that eventually cause the seafood to spoil, and they're called spoilage bacteria. But with proper handling and temperature control, most of this stays harmless, and we don't need to worry ourselves about it. We have to stay focused on the nasty little blighters that cause food poisoning and illness. Potentially dangerous bacteria can get onto the fish or shellfish through contamination, and contamination is caused by just one thing – people. Either people doing something they shouldn't, or not doing something they should. The product can usually only be contaminated by bacteria because of bacteria from you, your tools, your production line equipment or the working environment. So you must be clean, you must make sure your tools are clean, all work areas are clean and the working environment is clean. A common way of contaminating product is cross-contamination. This is a particular issue where you have cooked and uncooked product. This is why we have different coloured chopping boards for instance. And it's also why cooked seafood, such as a hot smoked mackerel, is kept separate from raw seafood on a fishmonger's display. The bacteria from the raw seafood could contaminate the mackerel with unfortunate results for you and whoever eats it. The handling of any cooked seafood is referred to as high care. 
You'll notice that the separation of cooked and uncooked product in places like a crab processing factory is more akin to an operating theatre in a hospital than a food factory. The uncooked crab enters the factory on the other side of this wall. It comes through this cooker and everything on this side is cooked crab. This physical barrier between the cooked and uncooked areas is a common feature of high-care seafood processing. There are also two other types of contamination, chemical and physical. An example of chemical contamination could be cleaning chemicals turning up in the finished product. This may be caused by ineffective rinsing of equipment after cleaning. Physical contamination covers everything from a bit of wood from a pallet or a metal slither from a conveyor belt found in a product right through to, and this has actually happened, an entire dead mouse being found in a sliced white loaf of bread. Sounds impossible, but I promise you it wasn't. There are two types of clean, visually clean and bacterially clean. For most of us in everyday life, visually clean is fine. Your clothes look clean, your bedding looks clean, your bathroom, your car and so on. But in the food industry, visually clean isn't good enough. To avoid contamination, everything must be bacterially clean. Now this doesn't mean getting rid of all bacteria or sterilization as it's called. That would be virtually impossible and certainly impractical. Now it means reducing the number of bacteria to a safe level. There are three main ways in which we can reduce the bacteria level in the working environment. Number one is to remove the food they multiply on. This may sound odd because you're working with the food that they multiply on, so obviously you can't remove that. But you can remove all the waste material like guts or scales and scrub work surfaces on a regular basis to stop the buildup of bacteria. Number two is to seek them out and destroy them. This means more cleaning and more thorough cleaning. Not just a scrub of a work surface, but a proper clean down using things like sanitizers. You'll have a closer look at thorough cleaning in a few minutes. Number three is to stop them moving around. How do they move around? Well, on things like tools and your clothes. Of course, you use tools to clean the equipment down, but the tools themselves then have to be cleaned as well. Otherwise, you're simply moving the bacteria around as you clean. And the most common cause of contamination is you. Our bodies are walking bacteria farms. So first off, we have to segregate as much of us as possible from the food. This starts with wearing clean clothing every day. Then, when you get to work, you cover up your top clothing with clean, hygienic, protective clothing. Every workplace varies, but this usually means wearing a minimum of overalls, hairnets and boots. These must be worn at all times in the workplace and changed whenever they're dirty. Hand washing is also mandatory. You wash your hands thoroughly when you enter the work environment and then frequently during the course of the day. You wash your hands before you handle food, if you move between one kind of food and another, from one production line to another, after taking a break, after using the lavatory and before leaving the washroom. There's no way out of it, you have to do it. There are food safety laws which govern you when you're at work and state that you must keep yourself as clean as possible at all times when you're at work. So if you do anything that may cause contamination, you have to clean yourself before going anywhere near food again. Coughing, sneezing and nose blowing should be avoided. If you have to do any of these, then you must wash your hands again immediately and before touching any food. If you feel unwell with anything like diarrhoea, vomiting or a heavy cold or you've got septic cuts, boils or any kind of discharge from your eyes, nose or ears, you must not handle food. Tell your supervisor first and he'll sort it out from there. Your company will have in place a procedure for this and you must follow it. Another legal requirement is that any cuts and grazes must be covered with clean, brightly coloured waterproof dressings and smoking will be banned in your workplace because it involves a lot of mouth-to-hand contact which increases the risk of contamination by bacteria. By now, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking this is all going a bit too far, that all these precautions are a little bit over the top. Well, there have been far too many cases of food poisoning leading to serious illness and deaths. In some years, more than 100,000 cases in the UK alone, leading to as many as 40 deaths. In most of these cases, the root cause is carelessness and ignorance. It does happen. And next time, 
it could be your fault. There are levels of cleaning which demand different cleaning agents to get the job done. Firstly, cold water. This is often used to clean away waste pieces of skin and scales and bits of fish and so on, all the kind of stuff left on boards and belts. Seafood is made up of proteins and if you try to clean protein with hot water, it'll solidify the dirt rather than remove it. While cold water is good for getting rid of fish slime, it isn't that effective on grease, for which you'll need hot water and a little chemical help. Food safe detergents, which is what you'll be using, are relatively mild and easily dispersed, which makes them ideal for general cleaning as they've got no residue which could taint the food. But they don't kill bacteria. Then there are sanitizers. These are a cross between the detergents and the disinfectants, which means they clean and they actively kill bacteria. Disinfectants are bacteria killers and very good ones, but they don't clean. So in areas where sanitizers aren't required, but you need to clean and kill bacteria, you have to use a detergent first, then a disinfectant. Also, there are two types of disinfectant general purpose residual disinfectants which often have strong smells and can taint food so you only use these in areas well away from the product like the toilet areas. The second type of disinfectant is food safe. This is less residual and as the name suggests is safe to use on food contact surfaces. Food safe disinfectants are often used overnight to thoroughly disinfect processing equipment and keep it clean until the morning shift. Detergents, sanitizers and disinfectants are used in conjunction with both hot and cold water depending on the situation and they must be used at the correct concentration, with the correct equipment and for the correct length of contact time. Contact time is the amount of time a cleaning agent must be left in place so it can do its job. Your company will have its own cleaning schedule which will clearly state the type of chemical to be used, its concentration, the equipment to be used and the contact time. It goes without saying that you should always follow these instructions to the letter. Some of these cleaning agents will just as happily harm you as much as they do the bacteria. Remember the bacteria that cause problems are food poisoning bacteria. You don't need many to cause a problem and they don't show themselves. They don't smell, they don't discolour the product and they don't even taint the flavour so you can't tell by taste or smell if they're present. They don't come out of hiding until they've produced a toxin, poisoning the product or they simply multiply inside you after you've eaten the seafood. We've shown you that the fish and seafood starts out safe but while in your care can be contaminated and cause serious harm. Our only defence is your continuing commitment to cleanliness, cleaning and avoiding contamination. So keep aware, keep clean and you'll keep us all safe at the dinner table.